So what do you all out there think? Put in the comments below. Do you think that there's going to be another shutdown? Do you think that that is an imminent thing that's going to happen to us? Or do you think it's just a bunch of hype? Here's my two cents worth. We don't know what's going to happen now, do we? But as preppers, if you have been paying attention to a lot of my videos, if we're prepped and ready to go, what does it matter? If you have enough food and supplies in your house, what does it matter? Today's video is going to be on first aid stuff and other things that you want to make sure that you probably do have in your house just on the chance that there is another shutdown. Now, like I said, put in the comments below. What is your opinion on, do you think that there will be another shutdown? Some states have started doing that. Some states aren't. What is your overall opinion on the whole situation? Put it in the comments below. So, let's get started. Now, we're going to talk about the first aid side first. Okay, I've done several videos on first aid kits and everything else, and this is my main Mac Daddy uh, first aid kit. Now, I don't have a lot of trauma, trauma, trauma stuff. You know, I can't operate on somebody and take a kidney out, <laughs> if you know what I mean. Uh, I don't have that ability, and I don't know what the hell I'm doing when I get in there, so we won't be going there. But if something happens, if somebody broke uh, an arm or a leg, if somebody gets a serious cut or something like that, I do have ways to take care of that in an emergency situation. If I cannot get somebody in my family or a friend or whoever it may be to the proper authorities to take care of that in a timely manner, I have a way to basically solve the problem, defuse the situation. That is key, people. Very key especially if somebody is seriously hurt. Say they fell, they broke their arm. Do you know how to do a sling? You know, it's very easy to figure a lot of this stuff out. There's actually apps that you can download on your phone and they're basically like medical guides that will help walk you right through those types of situations. You can also buy small little booklets that will go right into your pack, uh, your emergency pack and your backpack, have whatever pack you have. And they will walk you through a lot of the different things. You know, a lot of the um, non-life-threatening situations. We'll put it that way. You're not going to open somebody up and do open-heart surgery and replace a valve and put a stent in. That's not going to happen, people. But you will be able to, you know, take care of somebody's cut. If they cut themselves with a knife, um, if uh, they were swinging an axe and cut themselves, or whatever the situation may be, you know. Maybe you got a little kid and he played in the fire and got burned. Well, I've been there, done that. Ask my son. Moral of the story is, got to make sure you have some first aid. So let's just run through some stuff real quick. Now I have to put my glasses on because <clears throat> everybody, once you hit 40, the first thing that's going to go is your eyesight. My mother told me that and I kind of laughed at her. When I hit 40, now yeah, guess what? The eyesight started to go. Basically, what I need is reading glasses, and that's what these are. So you start off, you know, you, you, uh, like I, I did a, a video and I talked about having these waterproof uh, little bags. And I put a link and stuff into uh, that particular video. And um, these little things are great because this bag that I bought is water resistant and these are waterproof. So I store all my first aid uh, stuff in these waterproof bags inside my water resistant backpack. Now, a lot of you are probably like, well, why didn't you just buy a waterproof, you know, bag? Well, the difference in price is like about 50 bucks. And um, I picked these things up for next to nothing. So I figured I like the bag, it's bright red, it's got the thing right on the outside. Everybody knows this is a first aid kit. So that's why I went that route. Now, if you'd like to spend the money and you want to buy a total waterproof bag and everything else, you can. 
It's whatever you want to do. So these little pouches and stuff are great, you know. They've got these really nice zippers and everything. And in this one here, I do store a roll of toilet paper and a pack of tissues. Now you say, why do you have a roll of toilet paper in your first aid kit and tissues? Well, in a sense, you know, never know. You may have to go to the bathroom. That's number one. Number two, perfect fire starter, which a lot of your first aid supplies is a perfect fire starter. Remember that, people. So I carry those in there. In this little pouch here, I do have your hand warmers, okay? I carry the hand warmers, all right? Because those are great, especially if it's cold, if you live in the north or something like that. <clears throat> you never know, you may have to try to warm somebody up. And I carry emergency blankets. The little aluminum, little emergency blankets. You know, if you have to warm somebody up, if they had hypothermia, anything like that, you know, you, you never know what you're going to run into. In this pouch over here, this basically here is like your uh, aspirins and Moltrin and all that kind of stuff, um, some Benadryl, uh, all that type of situation. This way here, you know, somebody gets a headache, somebody gets bit, uh, gets into the poison ivy, anything like that. Which, We've got something over here we're going to cover on that for. And, you know, hopefully you can help somebody out. Now, <clears throat> this here is just your basic uh, tape and elastic tape, okay? Now, I carry a lot of this elastic tape because this is what you're going to use if somebody in your family or your group ends up breaking something. You can use sticks, pieces of wood, uh, whatever you have, um, and you can use this stuff to make splints and to secure the situation at hand until you can get somebody to the proper authorities. Like I said, more likely your first aid kit, unless you do have knowledge in a certain area and everything, uh, you're not going to be performing trauma uh, on the field, if you get what I'm saying. Now this here is just all different sizes, band-aids and gauze and all that kind of stuff. You know, gauze is a good fire starter also, all right? So, you know, it's just more things. Now to go along with all that, what you may want to see about picking up, it's called Numb Master, okay? Now this here is a, uh, a topical cream. And what this cream does is, if somebody say had a really a cut or something, and like inside this kit, I do have a sewing type kit. So if you needed to try to stitch up something or do something, you can put this on and it's going to numb the outer layer so you can do what you need to do and hopefully take a little of the pain away from that particular person. Now in my emergency backpack, my first aid kit, I do carry water purification tablets. Now I do that because these, once you put them into water, if you say you're out and about or you're out in the woods or you're out anywhere, okay, these will purify the water in 30 minutes. Now you may not be in an area or you may not be able to get a fire going, then collect the water, filter the water, get it to a boil and everything else. If you have something, a canteen or something, you could drop this in if you needed water to help maybe clean a wound, do something like that. In 30 minutes, the water is going to be purified enough so that you can clean it. So this is something good to have in your first aid kit. All right. And some of these other pouches here, you know, it's just some iodine and, and some uh, different types of uh, salves and things for all different types of uh, things. This is your basic boo-boo kit right here. This is just your standard band-aids. Um, <clears throat> this pouch here, these are really cool. Uh, you can find them uh, online. Uh, these are iodine swabs. So basically you tear this sucker open. It's a little messy. So you tear this open, you pull this out and it's a swab with iodine already on it. And then you can take that and clean the wound, put that over the wound, helps it so it doesn't get infected, which you want to really, really, that's the whole key, no infection. All right, <clears throat> one of the last things right here, now there is a bunch of other stuff that's in here, but I'm not going to get into all that. I've done a video, complete video on my first aid kit. I'll put a little link right up here for your viewing pleasure. Matches, okay? Now, 
and all my bags, I also do carry a Bic lighter. I don't buy cheap lighters, buy Bic. Bic will light just about anywhere. If it's cold, you can hold it in your hand and just squeeze your hand, make a fist and hold it in your hand for 30 seconds to a minute and I guarantee you that sucker will light. But I carry matches because if push come to shove and you were in an emergency situation and you needed to get a fire going for whatever main reason, um, you have matches and you have plenty of stuff on this table right here that you can light to get a fire going. All right, now, that's the whole first aid stuff, okay? All this stuff goes into the first aid kit, correct? Now, let's talk about some of the stuff that you may want to make sure that you have in your home, just on the chance that there is another lockdown. Don't know how long it could be, you know? I've heard people say 30 days, I've heard people say 60 days, I don't really listen to a whole lot of it. Um, I basically have the mindset that if I'm ready, I don't care. Whatever happens, happens. We can't control it, people. But we can be ready. So that's my mindset. My mindset is if we're ready, what does it matter? If that's what they have to do, they're going to do it. Whether you agree with it, I agree with it, anybody agrees with it, if that government says... We're going to shut it down. They're going to shut it down. But you start looking all over the country, and the, I mean, you know, the world, and that's, you know, what they've done. And in this country, you see some states are starting to shut down certain things, closing things, and everything else, where other states are opening more things and inviting everybody to come in and have a good time. So we really just don't know where we're going to go, but let's get moving on to what you may want to make sure that you have in your home. Okay? Extra toothbrushes. All right? Extra toothbrushes, toothpaste, um, okay, if, you know, scope, Listerine, any of that kind of stuff, just have extra stuff on hand. You know? You can pick a lot of this stuff up at the dollar store. It won't cost you a lot. You know, maybe not be your your Colgate, you know, MP34 uh, toothbrush that, like, you know, does the whole job, but in a pinch, just something to brush your teeth, you know? Extra toothbrushes and toothpaste and that kind of stuff. You know, you can pick up, you can get the masks, you can buy masks anywhere, but you may want to make sure that you just have some extra masks. Now, I have these just for emergency situations. I have other masks that I wear when I go out that I feel more secure with. Uh, a lot of people do not agree with wearing masks. Um, so, you know, this is an addition. If you would like to do it, fine. If you don't want to wear one of these, fine. It's all on what you want to do. But it's just something that you may want to have just in case maybe you do have somebody elderly that lives in your home or you do have kids or anything like that. It's just a suggestion. I'm not saying you have to wear you do what you want. Let your conscience be your guide, as my father always told me. Moving on down the line. Rubber gloves. Now, I have two different types of rubber gloves here, okay? These are just your regular standard, you know, rubber gloves. You know, you can just buy these things. I get them right online on Amazon. I mean, they're not really that expensive. Now, these are surgical gloves, okay? Now, these are a lot thicker and everything else, and I do have some of these into my first aid kit. Um, you would use these for a more... Um, prone to more of emergency type of situation. Uh, if you're dealing with anything with blood or anything like that or some, on somebody, and especially if you don't know who the person is, maybe you're helping out a neighbor or something like that, I would definitely put these on before I put these on because these are a lot thicker. All right. You also want to make sure that you have um, non-stick pads that are for wounds, all right? Because the last thing you want to do is put something over a wound. Now, that's what a lot of these things are in here, are the non-stick. And then, you know, as it starts to heal a little bit or whatever else, it sticks to it when you pull it off to clean it because you have to keep changing the band-aids out. That's just common sense. Um, you don't want to pull off, you know, scabs and anything else and everything starts bleeding again. So having different types of those with your tape, um, different types of tape, it's all what everybody out there likes. This is just a heavy duty cloth tape. Um, there's all kinds of different tapes. Uh, waterproof bandages, 
you know, especially if you have kids and everything else, you know, this way here, you know, if they get it wet or whatever, it's not just going to fall off. It'll stick on, um, even if they had to take a shower or something like that. Uh, just having some extra regular waterproof bandages. Cotton swabs, you know, just keeping this, you know, those are pretty cheap. You get them at the dollar store for a buck. I mean, there you go. It's, it's not rocket science, all right? You can get these. You get these Walgreens, all right? <clears throat> and they had them on sale, buy one, get one. Now, it's a, a wound care kit. Comes with all different types of stuff that's in there. It comes with the tape, it comes with everything, all right? And it's all in there. And they had these at Walgreens for $8.99, and it was buy one and get one. So that is a really good thing to have on hand. Okay, Epsom salts. All right. Now, <clears throat> Epsom salts is really good because you know it's you know for it's great for your your minor sprains and if somebody sprained their ankle, their their wrist or something like that, if they fell, you soak it in Epsom salts. You know it it will help. It does have a lot of different little uh, things that it will do for you. Um, you can buy these little bags at the dollar store. Okay, so you get these little dinky bags. And instead of buying, you know, because sometimes they come in the great big, huge bags. I mean, if you wanted to buy one of those, but I'm thinking cost effective for the beginners. And more likely, a lot of people just don't have a lot of money right now. So if I can save you some money, that's what we're going to do. All right. Now, moving on down the line here, triple antibody equipment. You know, you can get some that have the pain relief and the other one is just the first aid antibody. All right. So having some cream or something for, for wounds and all that to make sure that the infection, like I said before, doesn't set in place is a beautiful thing. You may want to make sure that you got some baby powder. Rubbing alcohol would probably be a plus. Making sure that you have hydrogen peroxide, which has been a very hot topic in my area because it just ain't on the shelves. So it's very hard to find. Um, another thing that you may want to think about adding because if something happens and if it's an emergency type situation, you don't know really what the situation may be or something like that. You know, if you're outside, you're working or you're doing whatever, you got to repair stuff and everything, you know, people are going to get achy and sore and everything else. And these little stick on little uh, pain relief heat pads. Now there's all different types. You know, this is a, a 12 hour. <clears throat> you have some that are smaller. This one's for the arm, neck, leg and small areas. Okay. And this one is for the back and large areas. So, those are a few things that you may want to think about adding to your stockpile in your home. Now, if you want to put some of those into a big first aid kit, if you wanted to make sure that you had some of those, those would probably be a good addition, but you don't necessarily have to. Now, one thing that I want, did want to talk about, and if you do live out in the country, or if you are planning to go to the country in case of an emergency situation, if that's where it's going to take you, um, and you do have kids, you want to make sure that you have some calamine lotion. All right, because this here is what you're going to use when the kid gets into either the poison ivy, poison oak, sumac, and any of those type of things. Uh, this is a godsend. Now, it is a liquid form. If you are going to store this, okay, into here, I would make sure that you double bag it. And by that, I mean you want to take and make sure that you take this, put it inside a Ziploc bag, and then put it inside of one of these bags, just on the chance that that old boy does leak, and try to make sure you keep it upright. You know, with any liquids you're gonna put in here. I don't really have a lot of liquid in here. I can't think of really too much. No, there's not. Um, hand sanitizer, I do have some hand sanitizer in here. Um, but this is another good thing. Now, for all you smokers out there, and um, I smoke it as a bad habit I have, um, been trying to break it. It's not an easy thing to do at this point in time with, you know, everything that's going on in the world. It's just a, a lovely place to be. So, but I do try to cut back where I can. But in an emergency situation, if something happened, say you couldn't get to the store, say the stores are all closed, you know, and uh, you ran out of cigarettes. Well, you're going to be jonesy and you're going to be pretty damn ugly. So you want to make sure that you pick up maybe see either some nicotine patches or nicotine gum. All right. Now in this box right here, there's 110 pieces. All right. 
So that may help you get through a emergency situation if you do not have cigarettes to smoke. Um, a lot of people out there, they look really down on people that smoke and everything else, which is fine. Everybody's you know, entitled to their own opinion nowadays, but it is one of the most hardest things to quit. You hear people say, oh, I quit cold turkey. Well, I'm glad you could do that. You know, maybe it saves some uh, years of your life. But, you know, and other people, I have a very stressful job. Um, I'm not going to go into what I do, but I have a very stressful, high-paced job. And um, sometimes it just gets a little much. And with everything else that's going on in this world, that just doesn't help. Now, does it? So this has been a quick video. Actually, I presented it quick. This is probably a pretty long video, and I'm sorry for that, folks, but I wanted to make sure that we covered a lot of these basic things. I want to make sure that you're prepared. And remember what I said, you know? It doesn't matter is if there's another shutdown. It really doesn't. Don't stress over it. Because remember, if you're prepared, and you have all the supplies and everything that you need, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. We all have to stop worrying about everything that's being pushed down our throats through all the media outlets and all the videos and everywhere else. It doesn't matter. What matters is, is that you're prepared. And if you're prepared, it doesn't matter. Survival preparedness for beginners. And until next time, folks, I will catch you all on the flip side.